Hey, good afternoon, folks. It's Steve, KI5JUF. Hope everyone's doing okay out there, having a good week and so forth. So I got a video today uh, I put together, and what prompted this video was um, a situation that happened last week with my radio, and it's going to kind of go into some, uh, I was basically swapping out coax and comparing the numbers. What happens is uh, I was I had some observations while I was transmitting in uh, on my FT991A, uh, noticing I had a little SWR about 1.3, 1.4. My current GP3 feed line is a DXE8U coax, and this coax has an amphenol solder connection. Uh, we soldered the connections on ourselves, Dad and I did, uh, back in 2000 or 2020. And had a scary thing happen last week. I was moving the coax while I was transmitting, and probably wasn't good a good idea. So I had a short uh, and. This was on my 6 meter GP52, which also uses the RG8 or DX8U with the solder uh, crimp connectors. The UPS shut down and the entire station went dark. So I ended up having to unplug the UPS and I was able to get the UPS to reset. The power supply came back on and luckily I was able to get the FT991 to come on and it worked. So I was really lucky. So anyway, I disconnected that questionable... Uh, uh, cable that went to my GP52, the one that shorted the, uh, the entire station. So I suspected there may be some fee fatigue in some of the uh, solder connections on the uh, Amphenol UHF male PL259 connector. So this kind of prompted me to order some uh, replacement cables and run some tests, pre-test and post-test, just to see what the numbers were. So what I did is uh, this is kind of the the overview here is the current coax connection system i have is the dxe8u with the pl259 solder connections and this is what the connections look like these are uh, a video where they were actually showing how you make the connection but these are what our connections look like here and uh, they actually looked okay but my suspicion was there might have been some oxidation corrosion whatever um but overall i mean it didn't look too bad uh, it didn't it it you know it was just that's that's what we saw so this is my setup uh, basically i've got the 991a with a diamond sx40c in line with the gp3 and i leave mine on the 0 to 30 and i typically transmit in the range of 5 to 25 watts so pre-data with the uh, DXE8U <clears throat> while transmitting at 25 watts the FT991A reported in a uh, SWR of roughly around 1.4 and what's strange is on the diamond uh, reading it almost was flat but it was just a little bit of movement right there but it wasn't much so these two were a little inconsistent so I didn't really understand that but uh, that's what the uh, the uh, RG8U uh, cable was doing, which was 1.4. So I ran the uh, antenna analyzer on the DXE8U or R R R R RG8, and it actually looked really good. Uh, the impedance across the entire band, uh, which is the green, is pretty close to 50 ohms. So it's not really bad at all. And the SWR is a red line. So uh, from a impedance ratio standpoint, it's it's not bad. It's you know 50 ohms. I think we've got a maximum of maybe 75 ohms here. No, excuse me, uh, maybe 45 down here and 50. So it's from an uh, from an impedance standpoint, it's it's pretty well balanced. So there's really nothing jumping out here at me. So this is the cable I purchased, a 25-foot section of LMR uh, 400. And this cable has the DX engineering connections already installed. Some of the specifications on it. Some of the things I found interesting with this DX uh, LMR cable, this uh, DXE400M is what they call it. It has a waterproof jacking and it's highly UV resistant. Uh, polyethylene 
which is ideal for outdoor feed line applications and you can also directly bury it underground which is something I didn't know. Long cable runs and lower higher power level operations uh, has a foam polyethylene dielectric that cannot absorb moisture and has complete shielding with 100% coverage. So I thought that was kind of interesting. You can bury it. It's uh, completely uh, UV protected. Uh, another thing uh, that was kind of curious uh, these cables i purchased had pl259s installed and i purchased those for a reason because uh, i didn't want to have to deal with that I, I tried to do a couple of them and I, I really had a hard time with them i'm not gonna lie to you uh, this one here uh, they were terminated at each end with uh, their silver plated brass 259 connectors um, it also has center pins that are hand soldered, they say, by trained assembly techs to assure proper connection. Of course, these special PL259s also feature machine crip shields, which was kind of important to me because versus a solder, a solder shield where you have to solder it with like a 200, 250 watt uh, soldering iron, what they do is they actually, I guess they have a device that they bring the shield in and they do a crimp on it. So kind of makes it a little more uniform and probably uh, a little bit more of a friction connection versus a solder connection which can over time can be stressed and so forth so I was impressed with that these are the numbers um, I with the LMR or DXE 400 basically essentially they have 1.8 dB which is roughly about 40% uh, 1 dB is 20% so they have roughly 40% at 100 feet, but since I only bought the 25 foot section, uh, my dB was roughly 0.45 at 25 feet. Uh, so that was, you know, less than 10% uh, loss. Um, and of course, here's the DX213. This is the a, uh, 8U, which is at 0.55. I was at 0.45 going with the DX400. From a dB loss, there wasn't much advantage to going to the LMR 400 but you know it had a little bit lower loss and it's good at higher frequencies so um, that's what I went with. I originally was going to go with the 213 but then I decided to go ahead and go with the uh, 400 because of the VHF UHF and uh, so overall you know that's you know the loss on it. So these are my numbers and I do not profess to be a, a decibel expert but uh, I what I did was I took the DB at 100 feet and since I purchased 25 feet I factored that by uh, a factor of uh, uh, reducing it you know from 100 to 25 so my projected numbers uh, on the DXE 8U which is what I had previously was about you know maybe 25 to 23 uh, maybe that was roughly about a 10% loss at point uh, 55 five db and this one here at 0.45 db was roughly about a nine percent loss so i hope i have this correct and if i'm wrong let me know uh, i just kind of took a crash course and the thing i remember and hopefully i got this right is one db is equal to 20 percent loss or gain if it's you know attenuation or gain so uh, overall uh, there really wasn't a big payoff in going from dx uh, 8U to 400, but I did this because I thought maybe the crimp connectors were an issue, and it tur it turns out they weren't. But anyway, it was a good learning experience. So, so here's the info. Here's the data with the uh, DX 400M, which is the LMR 400 equivalent. Uh, we had a reading of 1.5, 1.4, 1.5, right in this area. And then we had the number here. Also, this one was um, about 1.2. And here's the graph. It looks pretty much about the same, uh, maybe 1.3 with the uh, LMR DX400. So here's the side-by-side -side comparisons with the DXE8U. I had about a 1.4. And with the LMR5, uh, 400, I had about a 1.5. Same frequency, same power. Uh, with the DX8U, 
pretty much flat line, but with the uh, LMR 400, I had a little bit more of a needle movement here. Not much. So I can't really explain it, but it's kind of negligible in my mind. But uh, at any rate, that's, that's the information. So the conclusion is um, the DX8U uh, had a reading of 1.4 on the 991A, and, and with the LMR400, it had a reading of 1.5 on the 991A. This was the reading on the diamond meter. Summary is a little higher, uh, but overall, the DX8U coax was fine. Uh, I'll leave the LMR400 in place and use it, and... Uh, you know, that's kind of, <laughs> that's the thing about uh, coax, you know, uh, ham radio stuff. You, you, you get curious about something, you want to try something. And uh, this was a good learning curve because I learned, you know, about the dB loss, which is something that I hope I'm reporting this correctly. This is from the data sheet. Uh, and I feel like uh, with my uh, DXE 400 or LMR 400 equivalent, I am you know, roughly losing maybe 5%, 10% of power. With the DXU, I was losing a little bit more. But uh, overall, uh, you know, it was a good learning curve. So I just want to share this with everyone. If you have, if you're looking for, uh, you know, a good cable to use, I can recommend this, uh, uh, this DX Engineering. They have very good quality connectors. They thread on real nicely. They're, they're good quality. And... Uh, you know, it, it, it was a lot of fun. So, again, I hope this, this is helpful. I mean, it's just something fun that I do. It's part of my hobby. Uh, every time I learn something, I get curious. Uh, you know, I want to document it and share it with you. So, uh, and if anyone else, you know, has some thoughts, let me know. All right. Well, very good. Well, uh, I'll say 73 from uh, Steve5JUF. And I uh, appreciate everybody watching. Thanks again.